Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about rotational constants and how to use them to calculate the internuclear distance in a diatomic molecule. Particularly we're talking about carbon monoxide. Um, you can see in this animation the coupling between rotational rotations and vibrations in that molecule. And these methods can be applied to other heteronuclear diatomic molecules as well. Now the problem is basically telling you that for each vibrational state you can have associated, you can have a rotational constant associated to that. We're given in this case two of them, rotational constants, in terms of wave numbers. Each of them associated the first one with the ground state, the second one with the first excited vibrational state. And the question really is about if there's a transition between those two vibrational states, what is going to be the change in the internuclear distance in this molecule? Now, from the definition of the rotational constant, we can see that the rotational constant uh, includes the effective mass of the molecule and also the internuclear distance for that molecule. Now, this expression in particular is defining the rotational constant in terms of wave numbers. Remember that there's another expression where you can actually have the rotational constant in terms of frequencies, and the relationship between the two of them is if you multiply this one, the rotational constant in terms of wave numbers, times the speed of light, you get the rotational constant in terms of frequencies. Okay, so we're going to be calculating the internuclear distance for each one of those rotational constants. Again, each of them is associated with a particular vibrational state. This is the ground state with a given rotational constant, and then the first excited state with a given rotational constant. So what we can see is that we're going to be using the same expression, just changing the corresponding values of the rotational constants. So a suggestion here is, well, since we're going to be using the same values, let's group all the constants together. And all these constants are associated with this value that now I'm calling alpha. It's just a bunch of constants put together. And you will see that by dimension analysis, make sure to check that, uh, or unit analysis, make sure to check your unit analysis, that all these constants are going to be equal to this amount in centimeters. So I'm going to use this alpha, substituting this equation, and the value of the corresponding rotational constant for the ground state vibrational. Using the corresponding values, I calculate that the internuclear distance for that particular vibrational state is roughly 113.1 picometers. I'm going to do the same type of calculation, same values for alpha. I'm just going to be changing the rotational constant now corresponding to that first excited vibrational state. And when I substitute all the values, I found out that the internuclear distance that corresponds to that is 113.61 picometers, roughly speaking. Now, the difference between those two, I can just change, uh, sorry, I can just subtract one from the other. And then that's going to give me that roughly the internuclear distance that is changing because of that vibrational transition is going to be roughly 0.52 picometers. And that's basically all that it is for this question. Now, I'm going to bring uh, another way to solve this problem in Mathematica. So the first thing that you want to do is to define all the useful parameters. We have the Planck's constant, we have the speed of light, we have the, um, the mass of carbon, in this particular case, the mass of oxygen, given in terms of uh, atomic mass units. I'm defining my rotational constants as an array of values. The first rotational uh, constant that is given for the ground vibrational state, and then the second, which corresponds to the first excited vibrational state. And then I'm defining the distance uh, exactly the same way that I had uh, in here. Actually, let me define the value of the effective mass first. And with that, I have everything that I needed. So I, here I'm just calculating r. But remember that this one is an array that contains two values. So r is also going to be an array that contains two values. Those values are going to be uh, the distances that corresponds to each one of those rotational constants. And from there, what I can do is just calculate the difference between those two values by taking the second the second element in the array minus the first element in the array. So that means the, um, the corresponding internuclear distance for this wave number minus the internuclear distance for this number. And I'm just going to convert this into picometers just to, be, uh, just to have exactly the same values that I had before in the calculation that I did by hand. So I entered the values that I needed, and then I calculate each one of those expressions. And I calculate each one of those expressions, and like I said, R is giving me an array with two different values. And then the difference between the second component or the second the second element in my array minus the first element in my array and corresponding that into picometers is, no surprise, the same amount as I did calculate for um, when I did this by hand. Okay, so this is another way to do it in Mathematica. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later.